All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be giving you a bit of an overview of what the Timers app can do. I'll show you where to find bits and pieces and what it looks like when it's uh, all running. And then uh, we'll jump in and uh, set up a timer definition and workflow from scratch. So let's jump over and uh, have a look. Um, so, you know, here we are in uh, an account and I'm about to uh, kind of create a, a ticket as if it was sent in from an end user just to show you what the Timers app looks like on the right. So I'm gonna submit this here and um, by submitting this ticket, you can have it so that time is automatically applied, like you can see here, that measure things like first response time, uh, full resolution, uh, maybe you wanna be tracking all the total time the ticket's in a new or open status. Maybe you wanna be measuring how long things are in different departments. All of that's possible. Uh, you can do that in an automated way because you can see that these got added automatically. Uh, you can also do other flows whereby you manually add timers, for example, deadlines or follow-up tickets to reopen the ticket at the desired time or do other workflows. So yeah, it's a very flexible uh, kind of app there. So uh, if we jump into the admin part of the app, let's just uh, have a look at these different sections here. So the first uh, section is around uh, showing you, you know, t your timer definitions. So every different timer uh, you can set up different workflows for and different things happen at various uh, points. Um, then you've got your uh, schedules. So you can make your timers run to specific schedules, whether that's calendar hours, uh, kind of all day, every day, or uh, say business hours, nine to five, Monday to Friday. Uh, meaning that if, say for example, if a timer started at 4.55 p.m. on a Friday night, then, uh, and it went for half an hour, then, then it actually wouldn't uh, kind of, the timer would actually go until uh, Monday morning at 9.25 so that, that uh, you know, it only runs within those business hours. Um, then you've got your report section here. So any timer that's run, you will be able to see how uh, many times that timer has run, uh, broken down by week or month or whatever. Um, and if you, a timer has breached, you'll be able to see that and drill into it and figure out what ticket uh, kind of has, uh, you know, uh, uh, breached that, uh, it's, it's uh, duration. Um, of course, this is kind of the tip of the iceberg with re regarding reports because you can feed uh, all of your timer information into uh, ticket fields and then build your own reports over and explore. The last section here is your admin section where you can control who has access to be able to create uh, timer definitions. Cool, okay, so that's a bit of a, a kind of helicopter view of the app. Now let's jump into a brand new account here with, uh, you know, nothing's been changed. It's just a clean setup. Uh, and we're going to create a, a timer definition for a first response uh, SLA. Um, so uh, what we'll do here, we'll click on add definition and we'll call this one a first response uh, SLA. And then we'll make this uh, actually five minutes uh, could be a good uh, amount of time uh, so you can see it counting down when we uh, uh, apply it. Uh, but you can set that timer for any uh, period of time as you can see here. This is where we'd uh, apply the schedule. In our case, um, we haven't uh, got any schedules because it's a clean install. Now, it, when you install the app, if you, want it, if you already had schedules set up in your Zendesk account, then you can sync them by clicking this button, by the way. Um, but we're not going to, um, uh, sorry, I'll just go back in here. I've uh, <laughs> clicked out of it. So first uh, response SLA. Um, so we're not going to apply a schedule. This is where the permissions uh, allows um, agents to be able to manually apply this or edit it on the fly. If you want to lock the timer down, then you can uh, say nobody has access uh, to edit that timer. Uh, you can set your, your on time color. Um, like so, you can set your overtime color. We'll make it a cool, you know, purple color. Um, and then this is where the magic of the app happens. So when the timer starts, stops, ends, or uh, at any point relative to the timer um, ending, uh, either before or after the end, uh, end point, you can do anything to the ticket. Um, there's this you know, ability to add in an action like so. So for example, once the timer starts, uh, we may want to add the, ta the tag uh, FR uh, timer running, for example, uh, first response timer running. 
Um, now, if the timer was to stop, that when a timer stops, uh, that's uh, indicated by the, um, the desired behavior uh, taking place. So if it's a first response SLA, then we're looking for the first response on the ticket, which is gonna stop the, t uh, the timer. So at that point, we'll remove that same tag, um, like so. Um, now, when the timer stops, you may uh, want to record how long it took to, to have that uh, timer stopped. So this is where you could uh, record that on a, a ticket field. So you would need to set up or create your own custom field over in your admin center under fields like so. Um, once you've uh, created your custom field, uh, you can kind of just choose it from the list here and say, actually, we want to record how long this timer runs. So we'll uh, click the plus icon here and say, uh, we want to uh, record the, the minutes elapsed. Now, this plus allows you to actually record many different types of um, information regarding your uh, timer. Uh, so you can scroll through and figure out what you want to record. But I think, you know, a pretty uh, kind of um, standard uh, one is to, yeah, to be able to kind of know how uh, uh, long it, it took for that timer to stop, which is where we're going to feed that in there. And you'll see that uh, when we actually run the timer on the ticket, that uh, time gets fed in now. Um, and then when the, if the time, if the duration was to end, then this would be a bad thing because we would be hitting our, um, you know, or breaching our SLA. So this is where you, you could, for example, add in a comment. Uh, so comment like so. Uh, and I know the first response SLA has been breached, but you might want to go further than that. Uh, you may want to kind of tag the ticket, um, uh, which uh, would allow uh, you to kick off other workflows. For example, you know, a tag at this point uh, would allow that you to create a trigger within the Notify app to pop up a notification at the top right hand of, uh, side of the screen. Now I don't have any notifications in here, but uh, for example, this is what um, you know your notifications could look like. Um, uh, if, if you were to do that within the Notify app. Um, you might want to change, for example, the ticket priority. Re really, it's up to you um, what you do uh, at these uh, various points. Um, uh, the, the sky's the limit. All of the fields uh, in your Zendesk are open um, uh, to, to be able to kind of do stuff too. Then you could also do things relative. So for example, rather than kind of uh, raising the alarm bells when the timer ends and say, hey, the, 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 the SLA has been breached, maybe you want to give a warning. So we could say, you know, within two minutes, uh, before uh, the, uh, the the duration, which is uh, five minutes, uh, uh, ends, uh, let's do something. So we can kind of, you know, uh, SLA is about to be breached in two minutes. Once again, you know, this is just an example of what you could do. We're adding a, a, um, a private comment, uh, but yeah, uh, adding in uh, kind of uh, uh, tags or um, uh, you know cha making changes to the ticket can cause a natural um, uh, uh, bubbling to the surface uh, over in your um, uh, views uh, based on ticket fields. So it's up to you what you do, but you can do anything uh, you know at that point. So now that we've um, kind of uh, got this timer set up, we're going to save this. Um, and we'll be able to see now we've got our first response SLA timer in our definition. But this right now, this timer is not going to be uh, applied. Uh, there's, there's no uh, start point. There's no stop point yet. So this is where uh, we need to create a trigger that will start it and a trigger that will stop it. So we're really tapped into the engine of Zendesk here. So if I click on create trigger like so, then that's going to create a start trigger. Um, now this uh, trigger is actually by default will not fire because it's going to be looking for a tag that doesn't exist uh, on your tickets and isn't going to be part of the flows. Um, so it just it's it's a placeholder for you to be able to alter it. Now this action here, this is uh, the the actual timer starting. So we want to keep this in here, but we want to just change the rules to say rather than looking for a tag, we'll say when a ticket is created. Uh, maybe we want it to not run on uh, if somebody creates a ticket and solves it at uh, the same time. So we'll say is less than uh, solved. Uh, so if a ticket is created and is less than solved, then start this time on the ticket. We'll get rid of that tag. Bang. 
now I've got the timer running. So now uh, we'll uh, need to come back to the uh, to the app here and uh, create a stop trigger. So as you can see here, once you've uh, created your trigger, there's always a link back to that trigger that's controlling the timer within the app like so. Uh, so if I need to edit it at any point during the, down the track, I don't have to be uh, kind of scrolling through my trigger, uh, triggers or anything like that. I can just click on edit uh, trigger here, come back to the to, to that uh, trigger and say, I actually, we want this to be created when the status you know, is, is less than solved. And uh, so for example, the priority uh, is less than urgent, for example. Maybe you've got different um, timers that you wanna run on urgent. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna now create this uh, stop trigger. So the stop trigger will look for uh, when we get an actual first response uh, from a, uh, um, an agent. So we'll say when a ticket is updated um, and the comment is public and the current user is an agent. Um, so uh, that's, you know, letting us know that the, uh, um, uh, you know, the right person has responded. And we'll also uh, look for um, a, a specific tag that was actually added as part of the definition, which is the FR uh, timer running. So uh, tags contains at least one of the following um, FR, timer running. Uh, and this, what this does is because we um, actually are removing the tag when the timer stops, um, it, it, it means that this um, trigger uh, is not going to uh, loop time and time again. There's a nullifying condition in it. Uh, nullifying conditions is a very common kind of uh, thing uh, within uh, 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 Zendesk. You can kind of Google uh, that, but you know, in this case, we're just gonna look for uh, that tag uh, to ensure that this uh, trigger can run um, and uh, then we're good to go. Uh, so I'm gonna click on uh, save here and now we can uh, test this uh, timer flow out. So we're gonna create a new ticket here. I'll uh, set the requester and we'll say test, test and submit. Um, and we'll just go into this ticket. I'm just gonna refresh here because we have created a ticket field uh, for that first response time as well. Uh, if we click on to open our apps here, we can see now our timer is running. Uh, first response, we've got five minutes uh, to respond. Um, and we can see that the timer has started a few seconds ago and it ends in uh, five minutes. So if we were to now uh, kind of respond to this, uh, we'll, actually I'll just show you, uh, the trigger has fired. So if we look at the events log here, we can see that uh, app timers start first response SLA in the events log. So this is a way of kind of knowing what, uh, when your timers are, are running. And now we're going to uh, provide that first response. So here is your first response. And uh, submit that like so. And then coming back into the ticket here, we'll be able to uh, um, see that this timer has now stopped and the timer duration, which was uh, one minute, has now been pushed into that ticket field um, for, for reporting uh, down the track. Now this um, uh, ticket field uh, here, you can, uh, there are ways to, to hide this. this is, I'm just showing you this field so that you can see how it's actually working, uh, but you can hide it you know, with free apps like Hide Ticket Fields um, or uh, our Field Conditions app as well. So yeah, I mean, that's a, an example f uh, of, of, of setting up a timer and how it looks uh, on a ticket and how it can be automatically applied and enforced uh, and, and the workflows that can happen there. Um, so yeah, if you've got any uh, questions or comments or thoughts, uh, feel free to email us at support at sweethawk.com. Uh, thanks for watching.